A woman looked out the window and saw a black man running faster than the car itself, shouting at her as he ran. This frightened Sarah, a woman from England, tremendously. She urged the driver to speed up and leave him behind, but to her surprise, the driver stopped the car and even let the man climb onto the roof. The driver then explained to Sarah that the man was, in fact, a worker on her husband's ranch, pristine and poised. Sarah had no choice but to continue the journey with this group of men. On the road, Sarah grew very thirsty and watched as the driver took out a water bottle, drank from it, then let the dog have a sip, and finally prepared to pass it to Sarah in turn. At that, Sarah's thirst disappeared instantly. The one small comfort, however, was catching sight of kangaroos the animal she'd only heard of. The kangaroo's cute appearance deeply touched Sarah's heart, but the next second, to the locals, kangaroos were just food. That night, after eating roasted kangaroo, the group prepared to camp out in the wilderness. However, Sarah grew curious there was only one small tent. Did that mean she'd be spending the night with three men? With a sly grin, Drover replied, saying that the nights were exceptionally cold, and everyone had to huddle together for warmth. Sarah was horrified and zipped up her tent immediately. Luckily, Drover was only teasing they wouldn't dare bother the new boss's wife. Besides, the locals preferred sleeping by the fire. The next day, they ran into a drunk man named Bull, the ranch's accountant. With Bull joining them, their cramped vehicle became even more crowded. Feeling utterly hopeless, Sarah resigned herself to the uncomfortable journey, praying they'd reach her husband's ranch soon. Unbeknownst to her, however, something big was happening on the ranch at that very moment. The boy was practicing holding his breath underwater when suddenly, a body fell on top of him. The deceased was none other than the ranch owner. He quickly surfaced calling his horse to return and deliver the news. By the time Sarah and the others arrived at the ranch, they were greeted by smoke swirling in the air and the sounds of mourning echoing everywhere. Rushing inside, Sarah saw her long-lost husband had passed away. She held a funeral for him, and after the burial, Sarah was determined to leave this terrifying place immediately. The butler, overhearing her decision to leave right away, couldn't help but feel a sense of triumph. He quickly arranged a car for her to depart. But just then, Drover heard the news that the rancher had died, which meant that no one would pay him. Sarah, however, had no interest in Drover's pay. She only wanted to escape as quickly as possible. It wasn't until Drover approached her, explaining that with her husband's passing, the entire million-dollar cattle herd now belonged to Sarah, and tomorrow was the day the ranch would sell cattle. If she sold the agreed-upon number of cows, she would immediately earn 10,000 pounds a small fortune. Hearing this, Sarah realized that by simply enduring one more night, she could secure such a significant reward. She immediately decided to change her plans. The butler, who had been hoping to pocket the money for himself, was furious with Drover. That night, the boy, who had witnessed the incident, suddenly appeared in Sarah's room. He revealed that her husband's real cause of death was murdered by the river. He also warned Sarah that the butler was not to be trusted. The next morning, the butler arrived at Sarah's door, trying to convince her to leave immediately, but Sarah suddenly asked about her husband's death. The butler casually dismissed it as an accident. However, Sarah insisted that someone had witnessed the murder and pointed to the boy who had been hiding at the door. The butler gave a thin smile, walking over to the boy and whispering a threat. If he kept talking, the butler would harm his mother. The boy fell silent for a moment, and the butler ordered him locked in a room, but the boy managed to break free. He climbed up the water tower and, in front of everyone, loudly declared that the butler was a fraud. Enraged, the butler chased after him, caught the boy, and slapped him in front of everyone. As the new owner of the ranch, Sarah could no longer stand by. She grabbed a riding crop and struck the butler across the face, firing him on the spot. What Sarah didn't know was that the butler had a great deal of influence on the ranch. All the cowhands were his subordinates. Not only did he take the cowhands with him when he left, but before he departed, he opened the gates to the cattle pens, letting all the cattle escape. Though Sarah was furious, there was little she could do about the situation. Fortunately, Bull didn't leave with the others. She found him drinking alone and asked if he had any solutions. Bull produced an old ledger. It turned out the ranch was suffering heavy losses because the butler had been colluding with a competitor, secretly selling off cattle and raking in an illegal profit of up to 220,000 pounds. Sarah was livid and decided to take the evidence to town to report both the butler and the competitor. But Bull shook his head, saying it wouldn't work. The competitor, known locally as King Carney, 
was practically the law in these parts. Going against him would be a futile endeavor. Bull suggested that the only way forward was to stick to the original plan, herd the cattle to town and sell them. This was the only way to save the ranch from total ruin. However, managing such a massive herd was no small feat. Ordinary people simply couldn't handle it. Just then, a group of wild horses galloped past. Catching everyone's attention, Sarah rushed outside to investigate and was thrilled to see Drover, the experienced cowboy with 20 years of expertise, had arrived. She immediately went to greet him and pleaded for his help in driving the cattle to the port, but as soon as Drover heard that the butler and the ranch workers had been fired, he refused outright. Managing such a large herd required at least seven cowhands, and with just him and his partner, the task was impossible. Unexpectedly, Sarah chased after him and knelt before him, promising that if he helped her, she would give him her beloved prized horse as a reward. Reluctantly, Trover agreed, but even with him and his partner, they were still five people short. Sarah suggested recruiting the servants in the house to help. Luckily, two of the maids had previous experience herding cattle and were excellent riders no less skilled than actual cowhands. This left them short by just two more people. Sarah proposed getting the cook involved, but Bull explained that the cook had an equally important job, driving the supply wagon and preparing food for the group, while everyone was at a loss. The boy volunteered eagerly. Drover teased that the boy only counted as half a cowhand, unaware that the indigenous boy possessed some extraordinary talents. Now with just one position left to fill, Sarah decided to step up herself. She confidently claimed that she had been practicing horseback riding since childhood and could teach everyone else a thing or two. Facing Drover's skepticism, Sarah immediately brought out her black horse and began performing for the group. Her flamboyant tricks were somewhat comical, but they showcased her genuine riding skills and command over her horse. With that, the cowhands set off on their cattle drive. They spent the first day rounding up all the scattered cattle, but on the morning they were to set out. The boy spotted local police officers approaching and took off running. The police were there to apprehend him, as there was a local law requiring mixed-race children to be taken away from their families and sent to government-run facilities. This policy forced children to leave their mothers at a young age. To hide him, the boy's mother led him into the water tank, where they hid. Meanwhile, Sarah tried to buy time by distracting the officers, hoping to get them to leave. Just then, one of the officers began washing his face below the water tank. When the water cycled back into the tank, it caused the rusted ladder inside to snap, and mother and son fell into the water below. The mother couldn't swim. Once the officers left, Drover arrived just in time and climbed into the tank to rescue the boy, but the mother had drowned. That night, they built a fire and held a traditional indigenous funeral for her, and a thick smoke also rose from the top of the mountain. The old man at the top of the mountain was actually the king of the natives. The deceased had been his daughter, grieving. The boy curled up in a corner, refusing to speak to anyone, feeling deeply guilty. Sarah, as the ranch owner, tried to comfort him, telling stories and even singing in her off-key voice to lift his spirits. Eventually, she managed to coax the boy out of his sorrow. The next morning, Trover addressed the group, laying out the rules and responsibilities of a cattle driver. And so, this unusual team a cowboy, a woman, a child, and an accountant began their journey with 1,500 head of cattle, setting off toward the port. Meanwhile, King Carney and the butler were scheming about how to stop them. That night, the group herded the cattle into a narrow canyon, planning to rest there until dawn before continuing on. In the early hours, as the boy and bull took their turn keeping watch, the butler appeared on the ridge above. He quietly poured a long line of gasoline around the herd and then lit a torch, setting the dry brush ablaze. The cattle, startled by the sudden flames, panicked and began to scatter. The group awoke with a start, but by the time they mounted their horses, it was almost too late. Fortunately, the boy and bull had reacted quickly, moving to control the stampede. They managed to reach the side of the cattle herd, to prevent the cattle from charging over the cliff. The boy bravely positioned himself between the herd and the edge. A few terrified cows fell over the cliff, but he and bull finally reached the lead bull and drove it to turn around, steering the entire herd toward the safe. Open exit. Just as they were celebrating, the cunning butler appeared at the exit and set another wall of fire, blocking their escape route. This time, even their horses panicked, with one twisting its ankle and throwing bull to the ground. Even worse, the frightened herd changed direction again, now stampeding back toward the cliff. Bull, lying helpless on the ground, watched in horror as the cattle surged toward him, with no escape in sight. The boy, preparing to leap down and rescue Bull, was a moment too late the herd reached him first. 
and bull was trampled under their hooves. The herd then thundered toward the boy, who now stood at the edge of the cliff. Trapped with nowhere to turn, remembering his grandfather's advice, he began chanting a sacred indigenous song, mimicking his grandfather's style. On the nearby mountain, his grandfather, singing in unison, miraculously, the herd seemed calmed by the song and began to slow, stopping just in front of the boy. Exhausted, the boy nearly fell over the cliff, but Sarah and Drover arrived just in time to pull him to safety. The cattle finally quieted, circling calmly in place. Before he died, Bull revealed to Drover that it was the butler who killed the ranch owner, aiming to destroy the ranch so that King Carney could monopolize the beef market. The butler wasn't about to give up, though. He went ahead and poisoned the watering hole along the herd's route. When Sarah and the others arrived at the water source, they discovered it was undrinkable. To reach another watering hole, they'd need to take a five-day detour, which would make them miss the sale deadline. A companion suggested a risky alternative. There was a closer watering hole, which would save several days. Drover's face darkened when he heard this, as it would mean crossing the deadly desert no one had ever survived it. Although Sarah was eager to try, Drover stopped her, saying it was simply too dangerous. At that moment, a figure appeared in the distance, it was the boy's grandfather, the indigenous king he offered to guide them through. Sarah was skeptical, but Drover reassured her, explaining that indigenous people have a deep connection with the land and could find a way anywhere. With that, they entered the deadly desert, where the weather was more brutal than they could have imagined. Soon, they encountered a sandstorm so thick that they could barely see a foot in front of them. The king advised them to move directly into the wind. As this was the only way to keep their bearings, breathing became almost impossible, and the boy was the first to faint. Sarah, trying to save him, nearly lost her own life, catching a glimpse of a figure that seemed to be guiding the boy as if he were walking on the wind itself. Meanwhile, news of Sarah's disappearance spread through the nearby town. The officer sent to purchase beef had been waiting for Sarah's herd, but with no sign of them, he reluctantly signed a contract with King Carney, paying a high price for his cattle. Just as the ink dried, however, the ground began to rumble. A huge herd of cattle suddenly stampeded into town. It was Sarah and her team who had successfully driven the herd across the deadly desert, arrive at a trading position in time. Upon learning that King Carney was trying to steal her business, Sarah countered by offering the military officer a price 20% lower than him. King scoffed, telling her she was too late he'd already signed a contract with the military, but the officer corrected him, saying the contract wouldn't be finalized until the cattle were loaded onto the transport ship. With that, a race began between King and Sarah to see who could load their cattle onto the ship first. Determined to win, King resorted to dirty tricks, trapping Drover and his horse inside a pen while his men drove his own cattle through the loading chute. Seeing her herd falling behind, Drover took a daring leap, clearing the pen fence, he fought his way past the obstacles and reached the bottom of the loading chute, where he slashed the rope. Dropping the gate and blocking King's cattle from boarding, Sarah seized the chance to drive her cattle up a side ramp, loading them onto the ship. King was stunned his own setup had become his downfall. With the boy herding the last cow aboard, Sarah's unlikely team claimed victory. She became a local legend, the woman who braved the deadly desert. True to her word, Sarah gifted her black horse to Drover, Having developed feelings during their time together, they finally became a couple. Meanwhile, King, furious over the failure, blamed the butler, warning him that any more mistakes would mean his dismissal. The butler's face darkened instantly. When King later went down to the riverbank, the butler loaded a bullet into his gun, sneaking up and pushing King into the water, but King remained unafraid confident the butler wouldn't dare pull the trigger only to realize the butler never intended to shoot. A crocodile, lurking in the river, closed in, and within moments, King was killed by its jaws. The butler claimed it was a tragic accident and seized control of King's empire, but his ambitions didn't stop there. He confronted Sarah, announcing his intention to take over her ranch as well. What gave him the nerve? With his new authority, he could have the boy arrested in an instant or even erase his name from the wanted list altogether. The very next day, Sarah's adoptive son suddenly disappeared without a trace. While Sarah desperately searched, Drover confronted her with a hard truth saying that indigenous people were meant to be free, and the boy would never truly be their son. Sarah accused Drover of shirking responsibility, and the two broke up on the spot, not realizing that the boy had, 
in fact, joined his grandfather, the indigenous king, to begin a journey across the land, but the butler acted first, having the indigenous king arrested and thrown in jail. Meanwhile, World War II broke out, and Japanese forces began advancing toward the area, the townspeople evacuated, but indigenous boys, including Sarah's adopted son, were sent to an island near the front lines. When Sarah learned the boy's location, she rushed to the port, calling out for him. The boy, hearing her voice from the ship, shouted back, desperately saying he didn't want to go. Sarah pleaded with the soldiers to let her take him, but no one would help. Helplessly, Sarah watched as the ship pulled away, calling out to the boy, vowing that she would find him again and bring him home. Meanwhile, the butler was waiting for Sarah at the port, emphasizing that the island where the boy had been sent was precisely where the Japanese military would strike first. Desperate to save him, Sarah reluctantly agreed to the butler's demand, offering up her entire ranch in exchange for the boy's safety. After their breakup, Drover was planning to leave town when he spotted a convoy of military trucks heading toward the village. He quickly realized that war was imminent. Soon, Japanese planes began bombing the island, and the boy, along with the other children, ran frantically for cover. Moments later, the planes turned toward the town, and a bomb struck the very building where Sarah was sheltering. When Drover finally reached the town, all he found was a raging inferno. Frantic, he tried to rush into the flames to search for Sarah, but others held him back. One man told him to accept that Sarah was gone, distraught. Drover wandered to the bar, which was now in ruins, and began drinking. The bartender mentioned hearing rumors about the boy's situation, explaining that the soldiers had abandoned the children on the island, leaving them behind with no chance of evacuation. Determined, Drover knocked out the guard at the docks, stole a boat, and set out for the island. When he arrived, flames covered the landscape, he feared the worst, assuming the children had all perished, until he spotted figures emerging from the trees. Amazingly, the indigenous children had all survived, including the boy, who had narrowly escaped death by hiding in a bomb crater. But just then, Japanese soldiers approached. Drover quickly instructed the children to get to the boat. Most of the indigenous children, coming from the desert, couldn't swim. Drover used a wooden plank to help them float and, under the cover of night, quietly guided them to the boat. The accomplices used the sound of gunfire to cover their escape, but the gun quickly jammed, with the soldiers closing in. He ran in a different direction to draw their attention away, sacrificing himself in the process. Luckily, the Japanese soldiers didn't spot the small boat as it slipped away in the distance. Fortunately, Sarah survived the bombing, as she prepared to evacuate with the military. A familiar sound stopped her in her tracks the soft melody of a harmonica. Ignoring the soldiers' warnings, Sarah followed the sound and, to her amazement, saw the boy she had longed for sitting at the bow of a boat, waving at her. As the saying goes, what you yearn for will come to you. They were finally reunited. When Sarah reached the boy, she discovered that it was Drover whom she had sent away who had saved these children. Overcome with emotion, Sarah and Drover embraced, tears streaming down their faces. In that moment, they realized how deeply they loved each other. The three prepared to return to the ranch and start anew, but just as they were leaving, the butler appeared behind them. Now, the ranch he had so coveted was reduced to rubble, and he blamed all his misfortunes on the boy, believing him to be cursed. Enraged, he raised a gun and aimed at the boy. Drover noticed just in time, he rushed to shield the boy, but before the butler could fire, the indigenous king, standing by the water tower, spotted the commotion, grabbing a metal rod from the water tank. The king hurled it with precise aim. At the exact moment the butler fired, the rod pierced through his chest, saving the boy, but the celebration was short-lived. Drover felt a sharp pain in his chest and realized that he had been hit by the bullet. He collapsed slowly, passing away with no regrets, leaving behind a life full of adventure and courage. Though Drover's story came to an end, Sarah's was far from over. His loss made her stronger, more mature, and more determined. Sarah returned to the ranch with the boy and began building a new life. One day, the boy's grandfather reappeared, inviting him to go on another journey across the land. This time, Sarah let go of the boy's hand willingly. She had come to understand that love is both about protecting someone at all costs and knowing when to let them go. The boy deserved to live as his people did free to explore, grow, and create his own story. My movie buffs, thank you for watching. See you next time.